Hey, I'm Bob. Been totally blind since birth and I'm into Star Wars. Going to be talking about the fourth chapter in the book of Boba Fett today. This one's called The Gathering Storm. There are going to be spoilers ahead, so if you haven't seen this on Disney Plus yet, I recommend you watch it before listening to my thoughts concerning said chapter. With that being said, let's get into it. So, this one's another ginormous flashback, but an action-packed flashback. So, I really enjoyed this one quite a bit. I like how it ties in with one of the early season one episodes of The Mandalorian. We see Fett finding Shan on the sands of Tatooine again, but we see the aftermath of that scene. We see him spending his own credits, taking her to a mod parlor and having her cyber innards implanted. And that surgery scene, along with the, the mods themselves, I figured out who they reminded me of. They remind me of the pack from Disney's Gargoyles, specifically the episode Upgrade in which we get to see them with cybernetic implants. I've always loved those characters, and I think that's why I love the mods quite a bit as well. You know, we, uh, we get to see a bit of them in this episode, and uh, apparently they, they think machinery is beautiful. So, hey, whatever works for you, I guess. And I keep forgetting that Shan is not closed up. I, I keep forgetting she can't uh, close a compartment on, on her belly. I mean, her, her innards are exposed unless she decides to, you know, have some kind of armor plating built there. I hope she does because, I mean, if someone decides to get in close enough, I, she'll probably be able to take care of herself just fine. But, you know, I tend to be a bit of a worrier when it comes to these characters. Like, okay, you know... Don't anybody shoot her. You better you better close yourself up. Invest in some Beskar plating on your tummy there. Okay? <laughs> Anywho, that was an interesting scene. And I like how Fett is wanting to work with others. Because he said it himself. He's tired of working for idiots. He's tired of, of not having a tribe. He's tired of, uh, you know, putting himself in situations where he might lose his life. I feel like going down the Sarlacc skullet really uh, taught him a thing or two. And uh, I, I don't think it's a sign of weakness to want to work with others. You know, Fett's wanting to start his own house, as he states in this episode. So it's interesting seeing him laying the groundwork for that in, in this flashback. And of course, you know, after Fennec is nursed back to health, uh, he has her do him a solid. He's wanting to obtain his fire spray gunship, Slave One. So we get to see Jabba's palace under the rule of Bib Fortuna again. We get to see them going into the palace. And I love the scene in the kitchen where uh, the chef droid or the cook tries to attack them with his kitchen utensils. It, it, it's a funny little parody, to me anyway, of uh, that scene in Revenge of the Sith where Grievous is spinning all of his arms. Well, this droid has six, whereas our dear cyborg general only had four, but uh, the sound effects kind of sounded similar. So that was a pretty fun scene. And, you know, seeing that blaster shootout in the shuttle bay there was fun. And of course, Jabba would have a shuttle bay. I don't know if we've seen that yet. So it was kind of fun seeing where everything's parked in, in the palace. And for those of you who have said, oh, Fett's going soft, uh, he's, he's too pacifistic, I hope this episode might have assuaged those concerns because right after he gets his ship back, we see him going after the gang who slaughtered his Tuscan pals. And he straight up slaughters them with Slave One's laser cannons, just blows them all out of the sky with the cannons. And the two re remainders of the, uh, the gang, I think, the descriptive audio narration track identifies them as leaders. He blows them up with a missile. So yeah, uh, this, is, uh, this is a softer, kinder Boba Fett. Now, if you mess with Fett, if you hit him where it hurts, he's gonna get you back. Uh, he doesn't take a lot of things personally, but it was awesome seeing him give it to this biker gang. And I, I really love that scene. And then seeing him go to the great pit of Carcoon in Slave One and um, seeing the Sarlacc finally blown up with that seismic charge. Well, I mean, I guess some fans got what they wanted. I, 
I remember reading comments a couple weeks ago, like, oh, why didn't Fett blow up the Sarlacc? Well, you happy now, guys? You got what you wanted. See? It just takes a little patience. Wait for it, as they like to say. So the scenes that take place in the present were fun. And we get to see Fett, you know, working with the various crime families. And he's trying to get them all to remain neutral, which, you know, I did enjoy. But we, we do see one of them uh, step back a bit when he asks, oh, you know, what if we decide to kill you and, and take over? I love that little hint of the rancor beneath the floor grating there, sticking his talons up. And uh, Fed, of course, uh, satisfied him with a piece of meat. So now everybody knows, oh, OK, this guy's got a rancor, too. So better step back a little bit. That was interesting. And I wasn't expecting to see Chrysanthemum again. I, I guess the recap told me that we were because I mean, we're apparently reminded of things that are going to come up in, in the episodes pertaining to recap. So, you know, seeing him in the in the cantina there and getting into another scuffle. I just love this Wookiee. I, I don't know. There's just something about this guy that makes me want to see more of his character. And we finally get to see a Wookiee ripping somebody's arm out of a socket. How cool was that? I, I was expecting him to uh, possibly toss the Trandoshan aside after the uh, the Twi'lek gave that little speech about, oh, you know, just just kind of ease off. We'll, we'll clear your, your tab and you're, you're going to be off the books. Just let this guy go. And well, you know, Chrysanthemum just tossed him aside, but then we see his arm um, come flying after him. And that was just a great scene. It's something I've always wanted to see in Star Wars is this kind of a Wookiee just going nuts on people. And of course, you know, Fett has now hired Chrysanthemum to be a bodyguard. So it, it's nice seeing Fett more of a strategizing character. I think a lot of folks have been wanting to see Fett as a kind of Wild West kind of character that's just kind of a maverick, you know, wanting to just take out this guy with a flamethrower and that guy with a couple missiles. And it's something I like as well, but I, I like this Boba Fett as well. He, he can't just be a mindless killing machine. As much as we all enjoy it, I, I think it's fun to see Boba setting his house in order, you know, setting up his own business on Tatooine. And he and Shan are quite a team. And of course, at the end of the episode, we're reminded that, yes, a war is coming with the Pikes. And as we all know, the Mandalorian is going to be showing up on the show because that theme song was playing at the end when Fennec mentioned hiring more muscle and you, you got to know where to look. So cannot wait to see what is next for the Book of Boba Fett. I, I can't wait to see more fight scenes, hopefully more of Crescent. And I hope that uh, we get to see a bit of Black Sun after they're done with the Pikes. The Pikes are okay, but I've, I don't know why my interest can't be kept with them. Um, I've always been interested more in Black Sun and I don't know, the Pikes, to me, they kind of seem like second rate in terms of bad guys. It's not that I don't like them, but I don't know. Um, maybe if we get a bit more background, a bit more of what they can do, I don't know. I like the Huts and Black Sun a bit better than them. So I can't wait to see Fett and Din go to town on these guys in future episodes. And yes, I hope, I hope eventually that Prince Shizor makes a live action appearance. I don't know if he'll still be around after Jedi. Um, he was one of my favorite Legends characters. So maybe, maybe we'll get to see the Dark Prince at some point. Gotta love that, Feline. Anywho, that'll do for this Star Wars video, and I'll hear you guys back next week for my thoughts concerning Chapter 5. Hopefully you enjoyed it. May the Force be with you, and have a great day.